Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So happy to be here again today and diving into a new bottle with you all that I haven't covered on the channel before. This is Lucky 7, The Frenchman. So some things have changed about this uh, and they're noteworthy because what you may have thought you knew about this bottle may be a little bit different now. So let's cover some of the basics. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and pour it and let it start opening up a little bit while we talk about it. First things first, I gotta appreciate the bottling on the Frenchman. So Lucky 7, we'll talk about their brand, what makes them unique, but the bottling is really nice. You've got this Argyle pattern on the back of the bottle. So when you, the light hits it, you know, and you're looking through the bottle, it creates this really cool effect looking at the color of the whiskey with this sort of Argyle backdrop there, which is a pretty neat touch. You'll notice the old timey film camera right there in the middle of the bottle. That's because Lucky 7, their whole thing is that this was started by two guys who are like best friends and they share sort of common interests in two things. One is bourbon, the other is film. And so even the name of their company, Lucky 7, is a nod to a famous stage in Hollywood where a lot of phenomenal movies have been shot on the seventh you know, stage, the Lucky Stage number seven, right? So that's the uh, story behind the name and even the labeling here looks like an old timey ticket you know, like an old punch ticket for a, you know, a movie theater. Pretty cool little branding. Ooh, that was, that was a nice little satisfying thunk, you know. It was more like a pop than a thunk. Some thunk and some pop. That one was more of a pop. I'm really appreciating the color on this. It's like this deep chestnut color. You know what I mean? This beautiful deep brown chestnutty color. I really appreciate that. So as that opens up, Let's uh, chat about a couple of things you may not know about, Lucky 7, specifically the Frenchman. So, some things may have changed. Some of the older bottles of the Frenchman, they were doing what Maker's Mark was doing, where they were doing finishing staves, where they would take, you know, like a metal ring and hang staves of wood on that metal ring and then submerge that into the whiskey barrel so that these uh, finishing staves would be down there just hanging out in the whiskey. Now they're not doing that with this bottle. This bottle is a little bit different. It says specifically on the little ticket here that this was actually finished in, let's see if I can get it to focus here, finished specifically in new French oak barrels instead of French oak staves. So an actual French oak barrel, not a used French oak barrel. Um, a used French oak barrel would probably have been used for things like cognac, port, sherry, Madeira, these uh, fortified wines, and deeper, darker wines, distilled wines. Those are the kinds of things you would traditionally use a French oak barrel for. But this has not been used as specifically new French oak barrels. This is also elevated in proof point. You know, some of the other bottles that, you know, like you might see at Total Wine or at the liquor store for, of the Frenchman would be around that 114 proof point, somewhere around there. This one's a little bit more elevated. So my bottle here comes in at 119.1 proof. This is a single barrel, and this was picked uh, courtesy of Take and the crew over at r slash bourbon. Now let's talk about French oak real quick before I nose this, and then we'll get into it. French oak. So this is Limousin oak, or its proper name would be Quarkus Rober, versus Quarkus Alba, which is white oak, which is what we typically use here in America. But French oak, Limousin oak, Quarkus Rober, uh, known for a few different like key differences between that and our traditional oak. So Quercus Rober, the uh, grains of wood is much tighter packed together. So instead of sawing the logs, you actually have to slice them in order to get this watertight, uh, you know, uh, ability to have a watertight barrel with this kind of wood. French oak is usually bought up and used by the wine industry. And French oak tends to leave behind different tasting notes, uh, contribute different flavors to whatever is in the barrel. You typically get notes of like uh, bitter dark chocolates, really dry tannic oak, often leather and dried fruits, which is partly why a lot of the cigar cuts and the cigar blend bottles we've reviewed recently have had a lot of those like leathery notes and dried fruits, dark rich fruit uh, notes, because it's actually finished in these barrels that were used for cognac and Armagnac and Port Sherry Madeira, etc. And a lot of times people attribute those flavors that they're getting with the spirit that was in that barrel. But it's actually the fact that the barrel itself is French oak 
and that's what's still contributing a ton of flavor to your whiskey. Anyways, let's get into this. So we're looking at, it says non-age stated. So we're looking at a minimum of four years on this and that's before the finish. And again, we don't know how long the finishing process was either. So a lot of this is like, we don't know. We'll just taste it and see if we like it. The Frenchman runs you about $100. This is a $100 MSRP on this bottle. The nose is not overly complex. Lots of spice. Think of all spice. Plenty, just heaps of oak on the nose as well. And even like a white raisin note on the nose as well. A dried white grape. Let's try it. That dry oak note, just constant throughout that entire experience, beginning, middle, finish. Dry oak, tannic oak, steady throughout all of that. But the framing changes along the way. You start out with that sweet graham cracker and then it comes to a sort of crescendo right there in the middle of that graham cracker with some like mixed bar nuts alongside that dry tannic oak. And the finish then progresses into more of your bitter chocolates and coffee alongside that tannic oak, which makes me think of almost like a, a mocha kind of a flavor on the finish. And it's got plenty of heat, that, that proof point carrying a lot of weight. Mm, this great viscous mouthfeel on that too. It's very thick. And I'm loving that color, that deep chestnut brown. Mmm, what a delightful sip. I love that graham cracker note. There towards the beginning of the palate. And that nice crescendo in the middle. And then that pretty rapid transition to your bitters, your chocolates, your mocha, your uh, coffee notes. Alongside that tannic oak. And it hangs on for a while. Eventually, everything falls off except for the oak. And that is the star of that show. On follow-up sips, as I get sort of acclimated to that tannic wood, I am able to find that white raisin note in there as well, right there towards the tail end of that palate. All in all, that's a really tasty sip. I actually like that quite a bit. If you really like those tannic oak notes, hey, this might be a bottle for you. You might really appreciate this. I do tend to like a lot of oak notes, especially on these finished bourbons. I just think the sweetness of a good corn bourbon meshes really well with those tannic oak notes. I really like toasted barrel finished products like the Penelope toasted there. I actually just killed last night. I was just sipping on this while gaming my Woodford Reserve Double Oak, which is like for me, it's one of my staple like everyday drinkers alongside like rare breed. So I'll have to refill that. So we got to give this a score per my scale. I'm going to give Lucky Seven, the Frenchman, a solid 7.6. That's excellent. That was really freaking good. I like that quite a bit. I, I am a sucker for a lot of those flavors and to see them execute them that well. Hey, I like that quite a bit. And that price point is pretty accessible at hundred bucks for a product like this, considering what it would be competing against. I think it's a really good price point. All in all, really happy to have that on my shelf and uh, we'll be nursing that over time. Hey, now before we adjourn, a couple things real quick. So exciting news, I uh, got an email from a distillery manager down on the Jim Beam campus in Kentucky, invited me to come down and uh, do a nice little tour of one of their new craft distilleries. I'm gonna set up a private tasting for us, let us tour some warehouses. It's gonna be a really cool thing. So I'll be going down there to the Beam Distillery here in a few weeks, and uh, that'll be a blast, we're looking forward to it. If you wanna contribute to my uh, bourbon hunting fund for while I'm down there, because obviously, there's going to be a lot of stuff I'm going to have access to down there that I can't access here in Michigan. So if you want to contribute uh, any donations at all, five bucks, two dollars, whatever, to some bottles that I can find down there, you're more than welcome to make a contribution. I will leave uh, the PayPal donation email in the description. So if you want to get involved in that, you're welcome to do so. so. Hopefully we can procure some bottles to review here on the channel that I would otherwise not have access to. Hey, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. You guys mean the world to me. Thank you so much for your uh, consistent support. Helps me justify doing this channel, you know, taking time out of my standard work day to do this because you guys can uh, help me justify that with your contribution. So I really appreciate it. Hey, cheers. May you live richly and get better with age. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.